Hey folks, Seth Marty here. Hope you're doing great. Today I want to show you the Fostex 28H multi-track cassette recorder from the 90s. So the unit features um, four tracks. Um, it has eight inputs, but they are um, routed to four tracks on the cassette. Um, you have the normal tape out, so line out, you have one auxiliary um, channel, you have a monitor out, and of course also a headphones out, a pitch wheel, and um, two inserts for a pedal where you can make punch in and punch out recordings on the go. Um, you have pan knobs on your master fader, you have a high and low EQ shelf, a shelf EQ, and a uh, monitor control knob and of course on the four input tracks you got um, your trim knobs um, where you can rise the gain for your input level and um, it also features a LCD screen with your tape count um, the Dolby and R display and the obvious buttons like record play, rewind, fast forward, stop and a zero return button where you can when you press it, um, go back to the beginning of the cassette recording. So um, I think it's a fine unit. Um, you obviously won't record any very high quality things with it, um, but you can use it as a um, kind of um, effect unit um, to run your um, percussion or your drums through it. Um, gets a certain kind of sound and I also did some recordings with um, acoustic and electric guitar and of course bass. Um, they sound pretty decent. Um, you have to drive it pretty high, so you have to record a little harder than in the DAW, um, which is around plus 3, plus 6 dB here, uh, VU, of course. Okay, you now have a look at a um, sketch I made, little drawings, even though I'm not the best drawer. Um, where you can see all three different types of um, routing with a mixer, so how you connect the unit into a hybrid setup. Okay, so let's take the Fustix Multitrack cassette recorder. Um, firstly, you want the outputs connect to your interface and from there to your computer and your DAW. And now there are three options for inputs. So the first one would be that you take your inputs like guitar or your vocals or your keyboard or whatever you have and connect them directly to the inputs of the Fustex. The second option would be that you take all those inputs and connect them to a mixing board and from there to the Fustex. And the third option is the option that I'll take. Um, you connect the inputs directly to your interface and DAW and from there to the mixing board. And this gives you the possibility to use the plugins as hardware when recording. Okay, so um, then I'm gonna record some drums from Logic Drummer, um, which sounds like this. And then I'm going to record some um, electric guitar with the um, Fender Champion 100 um, with the Screaming Blues from Tejidak, um, a distortion pedal and um, I'm going to use the setting which is the um, vibrato setting um, in, on the clean channel. It sounds like this. <laughs> Bass um, might help as well. So I'm going straight here um, when we look at the settings. Um, for example, on the um, drums, I have nothing but a gain plugin just to lower a little bit of volume. Um, I record it through the NLS channel from Waves and the SSL channel with a um, 
low cut at 20, um, we're going to add a little bit of 10k, and that's basically it. Um, and on a bass, which sounds like this. I'm going to use the bass amp, the stock larger classic stack. Um, I'm going to use the NLS channel, um, a little bit of compression and um, SSL channel with a 20 um, hertz cut and nothing else um, and the electric guitar had an S channel and also the SSL channel and everything is routed to group number 7 and 8 <clears throat> and then on recording on track 1, 2, 3, 4 um, I'm gonna record the drums and one guitar simultaneously in track 1, 2 um, the left guitar will probably go to track 3 and the fourth will go. Um, the fourth track will have the bass. So I'm gonna record now a little tune, just a couple of seconds, and I'm back in a minute. Okay, now um, as everything is recorded, um, I have here my template to track one, two, three, and four, which are obviously the tracks of the tape machine, and they're routed out to the mixer on one, two, three, four. Um, I have engaged the record button here and the yeah, input monitoring and now we're gonna rewind the tape, oh it's rewinded, and now hit play just to have a listen how it sounds. Okay, here it runs. Track 1, 2. And now my the left guitar come in. So we recorded the uh, one electric guitar, the, the right electric guitar, um, together with the drums on track one and two. On track three we have um, another electric guitar, and on four we have the bass. And um, you might as well can just record the line out, so the, the left and the right master fader, um, but you'll only get a stereo track where you can't really um, cut things out or enhance it a little further in more detail. So for example, rewind it again. Um, I like recording all the four tracks um, back into the DAW um, instead of recording just the stereo sum. Um, get a little bit more control over the whole process. Um, you can um, engage different plugins in the DAW um, on track one, two, three, four. Um, if you only record the stereo sum back um, you won't have the possibilities to cut certain instruments out that you don't like. Um, you can also do um, another takes um, in the DAW, for example, to the previously recorded tracks um, on the tape machine. And so, as you can see, I have engaged tracks one to four in record mode and input monitoring. Um, the tape is rewinded. Now we're gonna hit play in the tape machine and we're gonna hit record in the DAW and there we go, here it drums Okay, so I'm um, let the record through and I'm back in a minute. Okay, so um, all the four tracks are now in the DAW. Um, on the first two we have the drums and on the right side the uh, first electric. On the third we have the left electric guitar and on the fourth track we have the bass. And for example, 
when I want now on the third track the second electric to come in a little bit later for example on this beat here I can cut it out just like that delete the first one and clean everything a little bit up also in the beginning and those are things that you can't do on the tape um, and it's very convenient to record it back into the DAW um, and of course not to only call the stereo some um, that's one reason that I like to record all the different tracks back into the DAW um, so it can manipulate and enhance them a little further so let's listen in here So now the um, second electric guitar comes in a little bit later, um, which could only be made when we record the tracks back in the dog. And even further, for example, we can now engage a little compression here on the guitars and on the bass. Um, I engage the bus compressor here from the drums, which is a DBX um, compressor in my rack and we can also engage a little EQ that I set in beforehand so without EQ sounds like that the drums, um, got a little bit of 80 Hz um, on the bass, and added a little bit of 50 on the drum, and reduced a little high, um, I think it's 12k Hz um, on the guitars. So yeah, that's basically it. Okay, so um, that was the um, multi-track session on cassette. Um, it's probably pretty much the same thing on a um, larger um, tape recorder like two inch tape or quarter inch tape um, the concept is basically the same um, it's pretty handy now with the technology to in, um, in incorporate it into a hybrid setup um, if you want a certain sound of tape um, or if a lo-fi sound like with cassettes um, to um, get the drums a little bit more I would say interesting. Um, you can do that. Um, it's very easy to record it back into the DAW and um, you have another flavor in your studio. So thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe and see you next time.